Good day everyone and welcome to another edition of In Case You Missed It. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to this channel. FIFA dropped the Super Eagles duo of Ademola Lukman and Captain William Trust Ekong from the final shortlist with the best awards nominations. Nigeria Football Federation NFF and the National Sports Commission NSC clashed over the appointment of a foreign coach for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Ademola Lukman last minute goal gave Atalanta the win over AC Milan to take them to the top of the Serie A table. Super Eagles main man Ademola Lukman was again proved to be the difference maker for Atalanta after scoring a dramatic late winner in their 2-1 victory over AC Milan on Friday night. The Nigeria Super Force goal not only sealed the win and 30 points but also extended Atalanta's unbeaten run to 13 matches across all competition, including 9 consecutive victories. The match began with Charles De Catalare with the Atalanta ahead in the 12th minute with a powerful header against his former club where he failed to manage a single goal in 40 appearances. However, the visitors quickly responded, drawing level 10 minutes later through Avaru Morata, who combined effectively with Portuguese winger Rafael Leo to find the back of the night. Throughout the first half into the second, Lukman had a relatively quiet performance but to remain a constant threat for the home side in Bangamo. He came close to scoring on two occasions, tested the Milan goalkeeper but failed to convert from tight angles. Just when he seen the ball team was settled for a shell of the spoils, Ademola Lukman made his mark. With 30 minutes left on the clock, he capitalized on lack of concentration for the Milan defense after a corner kick to sneak in a stony header into the back of the net, stealing a crucial 3 point for Atalanta. The victory moved Atalanta to the top of the Serie A standings, leapfrogging former leaders Napoli, who was two points behind but have a game in hand. Lukman's impressive form this season and latest goal took his tally in the Serie A to 8 goals and 4 assists in just 12 matches. Atalanta's win was a particularly important as they were without their suspended manager Gian Piero Gasperini but still deliver in his absence from the dugout. With the victory, they continue to establish themselves as a serious contender in the league this season. Atalanta now turns their attention to Tuesday visit of Real Madrid in the Champions League where they can strengthen their case for a direct qualification for the last 16 and get revenge for defeat in the European Super League in August. Super Eagles draw of Ademola Lukman and William Trist Ekong have been dropped from the fifth crew World 11 as a list of the finalists were made available by the organizers of the award. They were both included in the initial list of the players to be considered for the World 11, which Lukman getting a look in the account of his performance last season where he scored a hat-trick in the Europa League final to help Atalanta win against Bayern Leverkusen in the final. Lukman was ranked the 14th best player during the Ballon d'Or Gala on October 28th of this year. Proust Ekong had an outstanding performance for Nigeria at the AFCON where he was voted the most valuable player MVP despite the Super Eagles losing a final 2-1 to the host for the Roi. Despite their achievements, their names were conspicuously missing from the list made available by the organizers of the award on their official websites. The FIFA Pro World 11 is an annual award that recognizes the best men's and women's football team of the year. It is the only global football award that is decided exclusively by professional footballers. The award was established in 2005 by FIFA Pro but was rebranded as FIFA FIFA Pro World 11 in 2009 where FIFA Pro partnered with FIFA. Starting with the 2024 edition, FIFA Pro will independently manage the award and return to its original name. The World 11 is made up of the goalkeeper, three defenders, three midfielders, and three forward who receive the most votes. The remaining outfit players with the next highest number of votes is also selected for the World 11. Meanwhile, Southampton striker Po Onuachu is a contender for the Puskas Award, recognizing the best goal in men's football. Onuachu's stunning scorpion kick for Trasso Sport in their 2-1 victory over Konya Sport in the Turkish Super League captured the imagination of fans worldwide and air him a well desired sport among the nominees. Also, Asisa Toshola, despite being overlooked for the Continental Awards, has been nominated for the prestigious Mata Award. Oshola, a six-time Calf Women's Player of the Year winner, is up for the Nogra Mata Award, which honors the best goal in women's football. A acrobatic bicycle kick for Barcelona Femini against Benfica in the UEFA Women's Champions League, NIA Sport on the short leap. 
the Nigeria Football Federation NFF and the National Sport Commission NSC we meet this week to take a final decision on the position of the Super Eagles head coach. Former international Augustine Eguavon recently guided the Super Eagles to 2025 African Cup of Nations qualifications. Eguavon assumed the role of Ketika coach in September after the NFF failed to appoint a substantive head coach in time for the qualifiers. Opinions are still divided on whether the 59-year-old should remain in charge of the 30-time African champions for the 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifiers. A competent source in the NFF said the NSC is leaning towards Elguavon staying on in the role instead of bringing in a new coach. The source disclosed to ComplicSports.com. It's a dicey situation at the moment, I must confess. The NFF still want to go ahead with the appointment of a foreign coach but want to sort out the financial aspect before proceeding. The fillers from the NSC is that they want the present Trinca crew led by Guavon to stay on. To them, bringing in a new coach will not be ideal for the World Cup qualifiers. The thinking is limited time the new coach will have before the Super Eagles next game against the Amavubi of Rwanda. All the stakeholders are expected to come together this week to take a final decision on the issue. Eguavon, who has been in temporary charge of the Super Eagles, after they moved to hire the German tactician Bruno Labidia collapsed, has delivered on qualifying Nigeria for the 2025 AFCON in Morocco. However, the Super Eagles could only manage a point out of a possible six in the final 2025 AFCON qualifiers against the Benin Republic and Rwanda last month. They forced Benin to a 1-1 draw in Abidjan before they suffered a shock 2-1 loss at home to Rwanda to conclude their qualifying campaign to Morocco 2025. Incidentally, both Benin and Rwanda are in the same 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifying group with Nigeria. Rwanda leads the standings after four rounds of matches with seven points ahead of South Africa and Benin, who also have recorded seven points each but have an inferior goal difference. Nigeria, on the other hand, language they come from bottom with 3 point to lead their hopes of qualifying for the biggest World Cup ever, the Compete Shambles. The Super Eagles will resume their World Cup qualifying campaign in March against leaders Rwanda in Kigali before they welcome bottom team Zimbabwe. Jose Mourinho has delivered a sharp response to Pep Guardiola after the Manchester City manager highlighted his superior Premier League title count, claiming his trophies were won fairly and cleanly. The exchange began after Guardiola raised his fingers to Liverpool fans, pulling Manchester City 2-0 loss at Anfield last weekend, referencing the six Premier League titles he has won compared to Mourinho's theory. The gesture evoked in memories of Mourinho's infamous 30-finger salute to Chelsea and Tottenham fans during his final days as Manchester United manager in 2018. When asked, if he could suffer the same fate of being sacked as Mourinho, who coached United, Guardiola said, I hope not in my case. He won three, I won six, but we are the same like that. We are together in those situations to make our fans know that we are much, much better than people that think that. Speaking about the guest show, he said, It was just to make our fans feel that what we have done is extraordinary. I want to prove that we are an incredible football club. Sooner or later, it's going to be the end but I will try to extend as much as possible for the best of my club. Mourinho, currently managing Fanabache, took issue with Gadilla's comment. Speaking via Turkish outlet Sports, as reported on Friday, the Portuguese coach said, Gadilla said something to me yesterday. He won six trophies and I won three. I won fairly and cleanly. If I lost, I want to congratulate my opponent because he was better than me. I don't want to win by dealing with 150 lawsuits. The remarks were a pointed reference to 115 charges currently faced by Manchester City for allegedly breaching Premier League financial rules. The ongoing ladder proceedings, which began in September, have drawn scrutiny over Manchester City's operation. Head at the International Dispute Resolution Centre in London, a case could result in several consequences for the club, including relegation or significant point deductions should the independent commission find them guilty. Premier League barristers Andre Onta Casey and Adam Lewis Casey of Blackstone Chambers were seen delivery closing statement this week. The verdict, expected in the coming month, would determine whether Manchester City violated the rules and, if so, the extent of the punishment.